Hi guys and welcome to Smart, the show where we investigate arts. Today we're in the Springfield Woodvale Interface in West Belfast where we're going to be talking to a group from the Fourth Spring Inter Community Group. So let's go meet them. Today we're going to be learning about photo manipulation. Hi you guys, my name is Victoria and we're here today to talk about digital manipulation. Before we do that, I want to get to know you a little bit more. So can you tell me about your group and the type of activities that you do? So in this youth club we like to play football, we do different games like handball, dodgeball, and we do art and go on trips sometimes. So do any of you like to take pictures and what do you like to take pictures of? I do take pictures. I take pictures of me, my friends and my family to so keep it in albums and for memories. So what do you think some of the advantages are to being able to edit your photos? If you have a photo and it's a bit like too dark then you could try to make it a bit brighter. Is there anything you would like to find out about photo editing? I would like to find out how you can change the colour of a photo. I would like to learn how to um, insert stuff into different photos. Well that's great everyone. Now I actually happen to know someone who's skilled in photo editing so shall we go meet them? Yeah! Okay let's go. Okay guys, so this is Jenny and she's going to be teaching us about photo manipulation today but before we do that I believe you have a few questions for us, so what's your first question? What is photo editing and um, when do people start to use it? Well, photography started itself in 1814 and not very long after photography was invented people started to mess around with photographs as you can imagine. How is it different to traditional photography? Photo manipulation is basically where you change a photograph. You might create something that is completely unreal in it, or you might um, enhance the photograph to make it different or stronger in a particular way. So one of the first examples, and I've got a picture here for you to see, is um, from 1864, I think it is. And this was when Abraham Lincoln's head was basically cut out and put onto somebody else's body. So I don't know exactly why they did that. Maybe they thought the other guy's body looked better or looked stronger or more impressive. What equipment do you need to digitally change a photo? Well, basically you just need a computer program. Today we're going to use iPads, so we're going to use an app to help us change the photograph. We're also going to use a stylus. And the only reason we're going to use a stylus really is just to help us uh, get more detail into sort of and make it more perfect, but you can just use your finger on the iPad as well. Okay, so great questions everyone. So Jenny, what will we be doing today? So today we are going to go out into the local area and you are going to use these iPads to take some photographs. And then afterwards we'll take the photographs in here and we will use images to manipulate your photographs. So that's what we're trying to do, to create space in our photographs where we can bring in objects or people or animals or whatever it is to make it look unreal. Okay, well that sounds great, so shall we get to it? In the garden, we're going to take photographs of the plants and we're going to imagine that those plants are like um, an enchanted forest or a jungle. We want to have nice close-up images so that it's almost like the cabbage plants are like a big tree, for example. So you've got the steps going up here and it'd be really nice if your frame was positioned so that those steps fill the third of the screen like that. Now that's a really nice idea there. What idea are you doing there? Fairies. So you're going to have fairies inside this little house? Yeah. That is such a lovely idea, brilliant. So right here you have the lines of the pavement and you have the lines of the gate and you have the lines of the buildings around. So you're trying to position your frame so that all the lines lead towards a certain point in the frame, preferably along the rule of thirds. Right Demi Lee, we're going to try and take a photograph where we have all the lines leading to certain points. So we want all the lines to lead to one third of the way through the photograph like this. You 
you've all been outside and you've taken some really interesting photographs and what you're going to do first of all is you're going to go through your photographs and we're going to try and select a photograph that has the potential to be manipulated in an interesting way. Then we're going to need to go online and we're going to need to find images that are going to be useful to bring into our photograph to um, create some things in there that weren't there in the first place. You can pinch your screen and you'll see the whole page. Okay, so that's the first thing you're going to do. I've imported here a photograph of butterfly and I'm going to show you how to get rid of the background here. And if you hit the white area, it selects the whole white area and then you go to edit cut. You can see that that white area has completely disappeared just leaving the butterfly behind. So the things that you're mostly thinking about are you're thinking about cutting something out, you're thinking about changing the size of it, you're thinking about duplicating it and then you're maybe thinking about changing the colour of it as well. So once you bring in your background picture. Your photographs are really good, you're very creative. Oh wow. Well, let's have a look at these. Ooh. Oh my goodness. These are really cool. I think the last two photographs are your best quality photographs. So which one would you feel inspires you the most? This one? Okay, good job. Right. Right. See, I think that's your best photograph there, you know? And if you change that taxi for something else amazing coming through there, then that'll look really, really good. Very simple, but so. You want to do like a wee sort of fairy wonderland kind of thing? Are there any problems with using digital? Well, one of the problems with digital is that sometimes you can take too many photographs and then it's really hard to sort through them all or maybe you, know, you miss a moment because you're so busy taking photographs that you're not enjoying the moment. And sometimes people over edit photographs so uh, maybe all their photographs they're editing in a particular way like maybe um, doing a soft focus all around the edge of every single photograph they take and that can spoil the photographs as well. Now that one's really well in focus. That's a definitely a good one. I think your best bet is the one with the tire. Okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Could you get in trouble for tricking people? Well, you can get in trouble for tricking people if you have used a photograph of somebody who is a public figure. But normally what would happen is a photograph that has been published in the press if it misleads people or spreads fake news, it would normally be the publisher that would get into trouble rather than the photographer because they are the one that has put the photograph out there for the public to see. See the way she's used a real person? It works much, much better than a cartoon because it looks like it actually is a real person in there. My favourite part of today was getting to go around the local areas and taking pictures of our communities. The most challenging part was probably getting around a background on the, the first one I did because it was really hard. I picked the first and the first one to play it and I put it in the tire. It gave me another bit of an eye for photography. My uncle's a photographer, and I never really took any interest in his work, but next time he comes around, it might take a wee bit more interest. My photograph was down at the Peace Wall, and I added in wildlife creatures, like jaguars and elephants. I thought it was hard, but it turned out good. Well, I really liked the part of changing up the photos and doing whatever we wanted with them. I would recommend it because it was fun, but it takes quite a long time. But it's just a really nice thing to know how to do. Well, that's all from us at Smart today. But if you're interested in finding out anything more about digital manipulation, why not search online for any classes or workshops in your local area? Thanks for watching, and remember, keep on investigating.